everyone, this is Kelvin, Professor C here. Oh my god, I haven't seen you guys for so long, I miss you guys so much. How long have I been um, missing in action? Uh, I actually checked and I haven't produced any video for the last six months. So, what have I done in the last six months? Well, I'm now also a licensed real estate agent. So I have spent a lot of time during the last six months to learn about the real estate industry, the in and out and how it is related to the mortgage industry. And obviously I learned a lot and I plan to share some of my experience and maybe even do a channel similar to this channel but on the real estate side. Anyway, today I want to bring you some information about um, a, a new account, well I would say new but it came out April 1st 2023 and it's both related to the mortgage industry and the real estate industry and it is called First Home Saving Account. So how does it work? Let me show you. So it is called First Home Saving Account. As I say it came out April 1st, 2023. So, you know, as you can see the table of content, I will talk about the benefit, qualification, contribution limit, carry forward limit, tax deductibility, and withdrawal rule. I make it simple, so hopefully you understand easier. Why do anyone want to open up a first home saving account? Well, the benefit is pretty obvious. Any money that you deposit or contribute to the first home saving account is tax deductible. So let's say you're making $30,000 a month, uh, a year, right? Um, and you contribute $5,000 to this first home saving account. In terms of taxes, similar to as if you make only $25,000. So you pay less income tax in that sense. But when you withdraw that $5,000 out to buy your first home, you don't have to pay any additional tax in it. So the overall benefit is you saved it, your income tax that you should pay, right? Instead of paying income tax on $30,000, you pay income tax only on $25,000. Similar idea, okay? So, who qualify to open this first home saving account? Well, first of all, you need to be a resident of Canada. You need to be a first time home buyer and you need to be between the age of 18 to 71. Okay. So how much can you put in? I mean, it sounds like it's a no brainer. I would put all my money in there and then withdraw it. Then I have, you know, I can reduce a lot of income tax, right? Well, actually, no. The annual limit of contributing or putting into the account is $8,000 per year only. And the lifetime limit is $40,000 only. Okay, so you can, you know, that's, that's the maximum. You cannot put like a million dollars in it and then, you know, use it to buy a house. So what happened? Let's say I don't have $8,000 this year. I only have 1,000, say, right? What happened then? Any uncontributed room can carry forward to the next year up to $8,000. So using the same example, if I contribute $1,000 this year, that means I have $7,000 this year um, left over that I can carry to the next year. Okay, if I contribute zero this year, next year I can contribute 16,000, etc, etc. But it only carry to the next year. So what that means is if you contribute zero this year, zero next year, on the third year, you do not have $24,000 contribution room. You can only have 16,000 because it only carry forward one year. What about tax deductibility? So any contribution
contribution, any money you deposit into that account can use to deduct the income tax for the year that you contribute, right? So a lot of people confuse about this and RSP because RSP, you actually, you know, let's say you contribute the money or you deposit the money into your RRSP um, on January of next year, you can deduct um, income tax for the previous year. It doesn't work like that here. It is based on calendar year. So if you de deposit money in 2023, you can only deduct the income for 2023. Okay, so that's based on calendar year. And after you withdraw the money, um, the account will stay there for a while and anything you contribute after the first withdrawal cannot deduct any taxes. So just don't do that. Withdraw is withdraw. Don't de contribute any more money into there. It doesn't make sense. In order for you to withdraw, you must be first time buyer. You must be resident of Canada and that is tax residency. So even if you are a Canadian citizen, but you live in China, for example, or in Hong Kong, in India, right? You are not a resident of Canada in that sense. Okay. Um, you must be purchasing the principal residence. Okay. Now there is no minimum days that the money has to be inside the plan. So contrast that with RSP, right? You know, RSP, there's a first time uh, home buyer's plan that you can withdraw, but the money has to be in the RSP account <coughs> for a certain period of time, right? For three months. Here, no. You can deposit the money today and take out the money tomorrow to buy the first home, you're still good, okay? Um, so that's that. And 30 days time frame to withdraw, that means, you know, in between the withdrawal, you have 30 days. And that's about it. Uh, I think that concludes my presentation. And so again, yeah, I just miss you guys so much. Um, sometimes I have so many video already. I, it's hard to find a topic, but I will try to you know, now that I learned uh, some foundation about real estate, I have a little bit more time. Hopefully my next video will come up next month. You know, I still plan to do a monthly video with you guys, but you know, feel free to comment on it. Um, feel free to text me, uh, message me and anything like that. And I hope to see you next month.